Ferries are the main mode of transportation for Bangladesh's more impoverished citizens. With more than 130 rivers to traverse in the Delta County, accidents involving the vessels are far too common. These disasters are often blamed on serious overcrowding and appallingly lax safety rules and marine regulations. Because of this, hundreds of people have lost their lives in the country's rivers in just the last 10 years alone. Nearly 30% of Bangladesh's 170 million people commute daily through the country's crisscrossing river systems. Unfortunately, a majority of them are poverty-stricken. Due to this, it's believed that the government has not made it a priority to tackle the lax safety standards. It's all too familiar to see capsized ferries. Unsuspecting passengers are loaded onto poorly maintained boats with inadequately trained crews. The vessels are also often way above maximum carrying capacity. Despite this, operators continue to use defective ferries and carry hundreds of passengers. So, on December 24, 2001, Almost 800 people packed themselves onto a passenger ferry, the MV Avajan 10, many of whom were traveling to visit family and friends for the weekend. This vessel's maximum capacity was only 420. The three-decked ferry, leaving from Dhaka via the Sungandha River, was heading to Barguna, a trip of about 250 kilometers. Only about 155 kilometers into the trip, Near a rural town, disaster and tragedy erupted. At around 1.30 a.m., a sudden fire broke out in the ferry's engine room. Most of the passengers were still asleep at this time. One survivor, Anasur Rahman, told reporters, I was sleeping on the deck when I was awakened by a loud noise, followed by loads of screaming. I didn't even think. I jumped into the thick fog and freezing murky river and swam to the bank, like so many other people. He also added that he had seen smoke coming from the back of the ferry. One of the passengers even reported that the ferry appeared to be having engine problems before the fire had started. The boatmaster, in a selfish attempt to save himself, failed to moor the boat properly. He never even dropped the anchor before he thoughtlessly ditched the vessel and all the people on board. Also forgetting in his panic to unlock the main gate, preventing people from being able to escape the inferno. Burning ferociously, the ferry continued to drift downstream for 30 minutes before finally coming to a rest on a rural riverbank, an elderly woman told the AFP news agency. We were sleeping on a mat on the ground floor deck. My nine-year-old grandson, Naeem, was with me. He was scared and jumped into the river. I don't know what happened to him. I can't find him. Another woman who was traveling with her father, sister, and six-month-old nephew said the young child had gone missing as well. Many of the people aboard the burning ferry were forced to recklessly abandon the boat by throwing themselves into the river and swimming for the banks. Regrettably, action was not taken soon enough. There were not enough fire extinguishers on board and only the minimum amount of life-saving buoys. A marine police officer, Mambabur Rahman, told reporters, Many survivors are telling us that the ferry operator kept the vessel moving for nearly an hour after the engine had already caught fire. Had the driver stopped the ferry and anchored it immediately, it could have saved many valuable lives. Other staff members at the ferry's launch acknowledged that the fire would have been impossible to control due to the inadequate firefighting system on board. The vessel ran aground on one of the riverbanks on the nearby village of Dayakul. The Daily Star reported that 15 firefighting units arrived at the scene, within 50 minutes of the fire first being reported. It took an additional eight units to cool down the ferry, according to the lead fire official. The situation was completely brought under control just after 5 a.m. Zohar Ali, the chief administrator of the district, stated that four to five hours passed in total before the fire was fully extinguished. It took another eight hours for the burned-out hulk to finally cool down. 39 people died in total, and an additional 72 were hospitalized, most with serious and severe burns. Initial attempts at rescue were hampered by the heavy fog in the area at the time. A police officer said that rescue divers recovered 37 bodies from the river, while two others died from their burn injuries on the way to the hospital. 
A government official told reporters that there was a list of 17 people still unaccounted for, and that many others may not have yet been reported missing. By December 25th, authorities buried at least 23 unclaimed bodies after attempts at recovering more victims or survivors failed. Following this incident, two special committees were set up by the Bangladesh government to investigate the fire. They were ordered to report their findings within a three-day period. This accident, though, is just the latest in a string of similar and equally devastating occurrences. At least 27 people lost their lives on April of 2021, when a ferry they were on collided with a passing cargo ship. Seven are still reported as missing to this day. Wounding five people and killing 26, a passenger speedboat struck a sand barge in May. Five more are still believed to be missing from this. Further, in June, 32 individuals were killed when a ferry was struck from behind by another vessel as it was leaving a busy terminal. In August, at least 21 were killed when a ferry again struck a sand barge. The force of the collision caused the boat to capsize, throwing over 50 passengers into the water. According to a report published in April of 2021 by the Accident Research Institute of Beirut, over the last 15 years, 1,822 people have been killed and 419 injured in 576 separate but similar ferry disasters. An additional almost 900 people are still missing from these tragic events as well. Over the last 11 years, 387 ships have capsized in the nation's rivers. In 2021 alone, 200 people died in 713 separate waterway incidents. Bangladesh has only one marine court, where the shipping ordinances are used to resolve shipping and related offenses. This law states that the maximum punishment for those responsible for vessel accidents is five years of imprisonment and a small fine of 500,000 takas, or 5,800 USD. Operators, though, are rarely punished. Seven ship owners and senior officers connected to the ferry, Avajan 10, went on the run after the fire. The owners of the vessel are currently wanted for their role in several alleged deficiencies that may have contributed to the tragedy. The engine fault was thought to have begun as a minor issue, which progressed after no one attempted to fix it. The previous two engines on the ferry were replaced by one of the vessel's owners, Hanjalal Sheikh in early November due to a lack of fuel efficiency. He did the repairs without informing the shipping department of the changes or being granted permission. The owner told authorities he wasn't aware that permission was required. Sheik was arrested on December 27, 2021 by the Rapid Action Battalion. He denied that the fire was caused by a mechanical fault. He told a local news outlet that there had been an explosion on the ferry's second deck and the subsequent fire then spread to the engine room. A case was filed by Bangladesh's shipping directorate, accusing the owners and officers of disregarding safety regulations. Overloading is a frequently cited factor and the worst of these ferry incidents. The loss of unregistered passengers often makes the true death toll difficult to estimate. Until Bangladesh creates and enforces better safety policies and stricter punishments for those responsible for these lamentable and ultimately avoidable events, they'll continue to have these accidents on their waterways. Life will continue to be lost within these murky waters and rivers. For a nation that appears to look the other way on their culture of impunity, those necessary changes to marine time laws are most likely a long time coming. What is up guys, Darkest Hour here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, liked the content, and would like to see more of it, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe, but only if you feel so inclined. Those things will all help me get discovered by the algorithm and help get this much needed information out to other people as well. If you have any suggestions on other disasters I should cover, there will be links to my social media in the description. You can send me a message on any of those. I would also like to give a special thanks to all of the people who helped me on this video, including my graphics artist Sabelle, my editor, and my writer who helps compile all my research into a cohesive narrative. You can find links to all of their social media in the description below, so check them out if you're interested in their stuff. If you're curious about the sources I used, or any of the video sources, those will be in the bottom of the description as well. 
if you just like my voice for whatever reason. I also have two other channels I run, called Blue Spooky and Mr. Blue Skies respectively. They focus on true scary stories and creepypastas for Blue Spooky, and true crime videos for Mr. Blue Skies. I think that's all for now though guys, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a safe and very good day.